Hey guys, Kyle Jarris uh, coming at you live here, and I'm joined by my friends Claire and Tony. Hello. Hi there. Hey everybody. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about planning a successful community event. Um, you know, there's a lot that goes into it, and uh, we've done a little bit of research, maybe a lot of research. We've had some real world experience as well, and um, kind of put together some of this. But before we start, uh, while people are kind of filtering in and joining us, there's Terry Farmer. Hi, Terry. Um, just thought I'd throw it out to you guys and see how y'all doing. How are things going in your necks of the woods? Do you mean us or the viewers? Both. Anybody <laughs> that's got a, got a commentary there? Well, it's a great day here uh -huh. um, because it is my cat's birthday. Hey, happy birthday. Yes. <laughs> Pepper is eight years old. He's sleeping because he's a cat. <laughs> and that's what they do. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> that's his birthday gift to himself. <laughs> yeah. right. It's nice and sunny out there, so, you know, it's a good day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So did Pepper end up getting some cheese today? He did, actually. Right before this, uh, I gave him a little bit of cheese as a birthday <laughs> present. <laughs> and He's so sleeping he went off. Yeah. I, d I didn't want him to get too excited and run around during the broadcast. So. <laughs> Uh, good deal. Good deal. Uh, we actually went out on a walk earlier today, so enjoying the weather yeah, a little bit. Exactly. It's really nice. Awesome. Claire, did you have a question for us while we I wait on a few more people to come in? I sure did. So I want to... Oh, thank you, Mr. Sienko. He just said happy birthday to Pepper. So I'll mm -hmm. I'll let Pepper know <laughs> you wish him a happy birthday. And if he does wake up at some point, he'll he'll be on camera for a minute. Um, I wanted to ask you guys and our viewers, of course, um, I wanted you to think about the best event that you have ever gone to. And this doesn't have to necessarily be an aero modeling event. It can be a any topic of any kind of thing, you know, concert, movie premiere, um, event at a museum, a fundraiser, anything. Think about the best event you've ever gone to and what made it so memorable to you. Like, why was it so good? Like, what about it made you say, this is the best thing I've ever gone to? <laughs> uh, I was I trying to think of you. Quick, yeah, go ahead, Tony, go ahead. Well, you know... Uh... I guess I can think back of a lot of different things, but I guess the one that, that grabs me the most was um, the first world championships that I went to for pattern uh, was in Austria. And we had a great week being in Germany practicing. And then we went to Austria, but the, the organiz organizers did a wonderful job of uh, trying to entertain and, and, you know, the, the event was great as far as the com competition. That was great. It run very well. But it's some of the extra things, and I think that's kind of what you're talking about, Claire, is some of the other yeah. things that they do. Um, I mean, we had the opening ceremony. It was done. It was uh, all the people were, were dressed in traditional garb from, from years back. Mm -hmm. So it was a big parade in this little town. It was really pretty, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, and then the closing ceremonies were on two cruise ships where they wow. fed us dinner on a cruise ship. We went around the lake at night. And then here's the real clincher is about midnight. We were up there a long time. About midnight, they shut down the power grid for probably a 10 or 15 square mile area. So the lake would be in darkness and they had fireworks over the lake for us on the cruise ships. <laughs> wow, that's really cool, man. And that was, uh, it was really awesome. And obviously it would take, you know, uh, I don't know what it would take to, to, for somebody <laughs> to turn off your power to, to enjoy the fireworks party. And hey, we've got company lake. over town. Let's yeah, just shut it down let's, for let's a little bit. Down, right. <laughs> so, I mean, those things I think are, are really uh, grab me as, as uh, you know, very memorable experience, something that you would not normally do. Obviously, you're sitting down eating dinner with people from all over the world. So it was a, it was a pretty cool event. And just kind of those that highlight was probably the thing that, that pushed it over the top. That's awesome. That's a really good one. I don't even want to talk about mine now. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about I'll do, I could do mine, and then and then we can round it out with yours. There you go. I, I also came up with one. All right, let's um, hear it. 
A few years ago, I went to the American Alliance of Museums convention in Washington, D.C. And of course, Washington, D.C. is the home of the Smithsonian, um, our American treasure. And there was a big end of the convention party at the Natural History Museum. And so not only was there an enormous spread of free food and deliciousness, but we got to explore the museum after hours. And they had a DJ and they played September by Earth, Wind and Fire. And I don't know if anybody out there is a fan of um, Night at the Museum, but they played that song at the end of the first movie. And I literally felt like I was in Night at the Museum. It was incredible. It That's was cool. just the most fun thing ever. <laughs> Nice. You know, mine was going to be really quick. Yeah, we, we did jump into this real quick, but uh, honestly, I had a great time at uh, my first Oshkosh, which was actually last oh, yeah. year. It's Got to, to go up that. there. I mean, it really is. It's hard to beat. There's, you know, everyone's friendly. Uh, we're all there because we love aircraft, love aviation. And, um, you know, that was a really, um, I would call it a special time to be there and, and just have my, my mind blown by all the incredible stuff that's up there. So, um, you know, looking forward to hopefully attending this year as well. We'll see what happens. That's definitely on my top five list as well, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, good, good. So um, we are, as I said, talking about how to plan a successful community event for your club. Um, you know, there's a lot that goes into it, and um, there's maybe even some stuff that you've thought of or, or practiced um, at your club fields that could help us grow and, and modify this document. But um, we've put together these resources. Claire, you've done a great job of, of bringing these together to the forefront. Um, and we've actually published this uh, on our AMA Flight School website. Yep. Um it's uh, an opportunity for you to look at this and really jump into um, what's going to make your event the next level. What's going to bring it to that next level? What's going to um, excite the community um, to really want to participate with your club, get you some good press, um, and um, help you as you define what your goals are uh, throughout, throughout uh, setting it up? Absolutely. So we have... Um on amaflightschool.org slash community outreach we have our guide and it's a, a simple eight-step guide to planning the ideal event and i know event planning can be a little bit intimidating it can be kind of scary because you you want to plan something that is totally awesome right you want something where people are going to leave saying i can't wait for next year right yeah, yeah. And so one of the very first things that you want to do is define your goals. And one of the first goals you want to kind of define is um, who's your audience? Who are you trying to attract to this event? And so is it, is it club members? Do you want to just put something fun on for your club? Do you want to put something fun on for your local community? Are you looking for new members to join? Have you gotten a lot of interest from schools or Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, stuff like that? Think about who you want to bring to this event. That is one of the very first things because that'll help you plan out the rest of the event from there on out. So define your audience. Mm -hmm. And another aspect of the very first <laughs> part of um, planning your event is whether or not you want AMA sanctioning. Now, Tony is the expert on um, sanctioning here. So if you could tell our, our viewers a little bit about that, Tony, that'd be amazing. Sure. Um, sanctioning is really for so that another event doesn't necessarily take your pilots away. Mm -hmm. So it's important that you kind of look on your calendar in that process of figuring out when you might want to do that. Um, you want to make sure that flyers are available. You know, if, if like, like Claire said, if it's your club putting it on, it's probably not a big deal. But if you've got some people maybe coming from out of town that you're wanting to, to, to use in that demo or whatever it is, you, you want to kind of find out what's going on that time of year. So hopefully yeah. you block off a good weekend time. Exactly. Well, the coolest thing about having an event is having the model airplanes in the air, right? So you want to make sure you've got plenty of pilots out there. Yeah, right. <laughs> so if you're doing a demo for the public, you're probably going to reach out to some folks that you know, you know, that's going to come. So you want to make sure they have a free weekend. One of the ways to do that is look on the AMA sanctioned event calendar. Just make sure that there's nothing pressing. Uh, a Class C or Class C event is kind of 
in any non rule book event, fun fly fly in. We actually have demonstrations that are class D's, but you could even do that as part of class C. So you just want to make sure that there's no official event going on that might pull, you know, if, if you're in South Carolina and you're planning your event the same week as Joan all, um, that you might want to rethink that weekend. <laughs> there might be some better options out there. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's kind of things like that. You want you want to look that over, and and even sanctioning the event itself, um, it may or may not be a, a, a big deal for you to sanction. The sanction does kind of save that date for you, especially if you're running a competition event. So sanction is a cool thing to do, and, and also. If we're talking about community events, sometimes you're going to have those at a different place other than your regular club field. Maybe it's going to be at a city park or it's going to be at the fairgrounds or something like that. So this site wouldn't be a typical site that you fly at. So you might need to get site owner insurance for that event week. And you can do that in your sanction. So um, that's another good reason to do that. You'll be able to get site owner insurance for that particular organization or person that owns the land. So yeah. those would be the reasons I would reach out for a sanction. Well, and definitely don't uh, don't forget to check in with your uh, local, you know, county uh, board commissions. You know, your your visitors bureau if you've got one there. Make sure you're not stepping on the toes of an event that's already there that you might not know Absolutely. about. Absolutely. Yeah, a great way to find out if there are conflicting events is see if your town has a community event calendar, and those are really really easy to find. You just go on Google, you type in the name of your town community event calendar, and 99% of the time, you're going to find something if it's on the Visitors Bureau, like Kyle said, or just post it on its own website. Uh, Muncie, where uh, the AMA is located, actually has three community calendars. I'm always yeah, cross-referencing them. <laughs> yeah, and the other thing about that, too, is you might want to check local sound towns no near you. Like Indianapolis is not that far from us. If they had a big event like the Indy 500 going on a certain week in town, you, you might want to rethink that, too. So it, it is good for you to look and see what is going on that week and make sure that you're, you're picking a time that that your audience would be able to show up and enjoy. And also potentially partnering with an event that's already happening. Yes, you know, find something that's already got a huge draw of people that you know might be also aviation enthusiasts or, or people that could be swayed that way and, and bring them into the fold. Absolutely. Right. Actually, piggybacking onto an existing event that is relevant to what you're trying to do is actually a great way to kind of get your feet wet in event planning because whoever is putting on this existing event probably has been doing it for quite a few years and so they have that experience behind them and you can get so much good advice and um, guidance that way and so you're not so scared of putting on your own event for the very first time you have some veterans there to help you out yeah so, and, and, and totally. you can take advantage of what they've done they've probably got food vendors there they probably have porta potties there they probably have security and and safety yeah. people for first uh first responders there so that kind of takes some of that complexity out of the situation as well exactly yeah. good call so now that we um have it sounds like we have an idea for our event we have to i'm not going to say elect but you have to pick someone who's going to be your event planner and who's that going to be there actually might be someone in your club who has planned events before and don't just think inside the aviation box, right? You want to think outside of the box. If someone has done um, events with their kids before or church events or anything like that, there there is untapped potential in your club for event planning. So see who's done event planning before and also consult their family members or their spouses because you never know. There might be someone just waiting in the wings there that is absolutely Someone's awesome there that, at this that does all the great parties right like mm -hmm. someone you know and, and that's who you want in that spot yeah you're like oh that person puts on the best halloween party <laughs> they're gonna be in charge <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so you know select your event planner and then they will um, establish an event subcommittee and you you want to spread out the responsibilities you don't want to take this all on by yourself because you will burn out and you will be devastated if you don't get every single person to come to your event because you would put your heart and soul into it. Obviously you do want to be very involved in your event planning, but you don't want to do everything yourself. Like that's my, that's my big advice for you guys. <laughs> so find someone who, again, this is kind of like tapping into everybody's skill sets. 
who knows who to rent um, party supplies from? You know, like, where are you going to get tablecloths? Pick someone to be that aspect of the event. Who knows some food vendors? Have them do that aspect, and so on and so yeah. forth. Yep. So, you know, you establish these roles very, very early on, and that way everybody is held accountable, and you're not take, you're not biting too much off at once. You want to make sure that, you know, you know what you're doing. Everybody knows what they're doing. And that brings us into planning. You have to have, you have to plan to plan, right? And so you got to plan um, consistent meetings for your event planning process because otherwise you're not going to know. The left hand does not know what the right hand is doing, right? So, you know, someone might be way, way ahead in planning ahead of you and you're like, uh oh, I don't have a venue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Make so, sure that, that you get all really, that stuff organized. Yeah, it's really important to have that committee together with everybody with having their own specific um, tasks that they need to accomplish and then a reporting process where you go back. Mm -hmm. um, I, I also have run two world championships where I was the contest director. And those are, you know, where you're dealing with 45 countries, all that stuff that goes with that. There are a lot of pieces from rental cars, hotels, mm -hmm. language, people that you grab from a local university. There's so many pieces. And sometimes you don't know what those pieces are completely. So if you can divide those things up like Claire's talking about, someone can take those yeah. processes on. And then when you have your weekly meeting or whatever it is and something comes up, you can bring that to the group and determine, oh, we need to do you know, move a need a new person or we need to do something extra. That yeah. communication will help you to have a really good quality event. Yeah, being exactly. the lead on something like this doesn't mean you have to do everything yourself. You can't, in fact. Like, you've got to find people you trust. You know, delegate that authority and trust them. You know, trust them to get things done. I, I think that's Leadership 101. Well, I, I, I think I would take it almost to another step. And I would recommend that the person that's the organizer that's running this meeting, their job is organizing the meeting and the people. You almost need to be focused on that one task and not have your own outside tasks to do, depending on the size of the event and what you're doing. But you could have some stuff that really gets complex when you're dealing with counties and parks and different things. So, um, yeah, just you need a good organizer to be the person kind of managing this whole process and then yeah. grab your specialists that have those skill sets. Certainly. Exactly. I'm going to jump in really quick. Ronnie had a question. Hey, Ronnie. Um, it was, if I have a youth contest of a non-AMA class, can I sanction without all participating being AMA members? Well, the, the issue is that first, the nice thing about a youth, the, the, the quick answer is no. You can sanction the event, but if they're not AMA members, they wouldn't be flying under our insurance, which could, could compromise your site owner. So that right now, the thing to do is youth under eight, under 19 are free. So right now, I would grab those youth, sign them all up, and they can come and fly in that event, and they're good to go. So that's the best answer for youth. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so where are we at? We've pretty much defined the goals. Yep. I think, Claire. So what's next? Well, we need to define a timeline. And yeah. so... I, I'm a planner. I'm somebody who likes to make spreadsheets and get everything all planned out. You should see how I plan my Disney trips. But anyway, <laughs> um, you want to start planning an event minimum four to six months out. So if, say, okay, it's April, right? So let's say we're going to do a harvest fly-in in in october and so we want to get started now. We want to think about everything we want to have happen. Then giving yourself a long timeline helps you so much because like Tony said, especially if you're expecting international participants and attendees, they need to be able to set up their flights, their hotels, their passports, you know, but not even just international guests. You have to think about, okay, what venue do I want? Is it going to be available? Um, who am I going to get out here? You know, you it gives you enough time and also the people that you're involving enough time to prepare for the event and a lot of other things that we're going to go over a little bit later. So timeline, four to six months. For me, yeah. ideally a year. I say start a year in advance because then you'll just get all on lock and it'll be 
pretty awesome. So that's yeah. number two. <laughs> Define a timeline. When will it take place? Yeah. Number three is where it gets a little dicey and people might get a little uncomfortable because we're going to talk about money. <laughs> you need to set a budget. And again, this, this goes back to um, planning it really far in advance because if you've never planned an event before, how do you know how much tablecloths are going to cost or porta potty rentals or venue rentals? Like if you're starting from scratch, you need to figure out how much all this stuff is going to cost and how you're going to pay for it. Mm -hmm. right. And so how are you going to pay for it? <laughs> now, obviously, typically you have a, you know, a, a fee that you're going to charge the pilots, but it depends on what this is. You know, if it's a, if it's trip, you know, definitely a community event, you're having an air show, you're going to charge parking or attendance from the spectators. So you got to figure out what your local uh, people would be willing to pay. Uh, yep. So in, or, in order to, like you said, start that budget. So that's a very important piece of this that you need to talk about early. Because talk to local businesses, on. talk to, you oh, know, your yeah. visitors bureau, you know, reach out, do some fundraising. You know, um, if you're, if you're going to go to the level of having like an event t-shirt or something, Hey, that, that spot on the back is perfect for logos, you know, and, um, uh, you know, you in a lot everybody, of ways. everybody will do. That. I've had clubs that had Burger King help them, and mm -hmm. other, yeah, look and into other all kinds of stuff. Yeah, look into local businesses. Start reaching out, see who you can get to um, sponsor your event, or cater your event, or even donate food or product to your event, which would be awesome. One and of the all, one, one of the best ways, clearly, is to you check with your club off club members. There's exactly. Club members that work somewhere and they may be able to talk to their boss or their company and they have a advertising budget. They'd be happy to throw a couple three hundred bucks that direction for something. That exactly. All the time. You have you have this great resource. Every single person in your club has their own network. And so you tell them, okay, you reach out. Who do you know? Who do you know? How can we put this event on? How can we do this? And yep. so it's it's all about networking and sure. figuring out how you're going to pay for your event. You can also offset um, your costs, like Tony said, by charging for parking, um, potentially charging for tickets. Um, but if it's if it's like a free family event, which is something that tends to be pretty successful for us here in Muncie, it is those auxiliary costs. So paying for having them pay for food, paying for merchandise, things like that, that are not, that are separate from admission. So free admission is, can be a really good way to go, even though that would be the best way to um, generate revenue for your event. Yeah, look at alternate methods. Definitely. So we're on number four. We're halfway through the plan, guys. We're getting there. Our vet, our, <laughs> our harvest fly-in is almost ready. <laughs> yep. So part number four is find a venue. And this can actually be the easiest thing for some people to do. Like um, if you have a flying site, there you go. Done. I like, use it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, typically you're going to have parking already you're going to have some place for people to charge their planes um but some there are some challenges when you have your own flying site because typically you might not have dozens of people there you know at one time i mean that's ideal if you have like a huge club right but you're not always having you know hundreds of people there big groups of families for example um so you have to think about um restroom situation do you have enough restrooms for everyone do you have uh places for families with small children you know things like that that you might not usually be considering is your parking lot big enough or do you have the space for um parking to take place like on the field or on you know like on a grassy area that yeah. you might have there but if you don't have your own flying site you need to start researching very early where you're going to be allowed to fly because that can get. And that's where that sanctioning can come in really handy mm -hmm. to offer that insurance to whomever owns that site. And I would also recommend for clubs that are looking to do their first event. You know, if you're starting this out, you probably do want to start on a little bit smaller scale. It's going to be a little easier for you to handle. 
um, and probably have it at your local flying site. Utilize some of the resources that you've already put mm -hmm. together there. And if you, you know, and I'll go back to the Joan All. When that started, it was, you know, a couple dozen people at the first one. Now you got 1,700 people showing up. So yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't start with 1,700 people. It builds up to that. So, mm -hmm. you know, start on a smaller scale. Don't feel like you have to, you know, make, hit thousands of people to start with. But start on a scale that you can uh, handle. And uh, you'll learn each year. You're going to learn some things. Take notes. You know, go back at have a. We haven't got to it really, but at the end of this thing, you want to have a post meeting and talk about what went well and what didn't go well. Get some feedback from those that attended, and plan for start your next year planning for the next okay. one. You're 12 months out from the next thing. That's so right. Exactly. Um, <laughs> looks like we have a comment here. You know, um, are we going to cover? changes that the clubs can make in operations in the post coronavirus world. I think it's always good to keep an eye on the environment, uh, realize what's happening and make accommodations for that. So um, I know that there's even some uh, clubs that are doing events right now, this weekend, you know, events aren't shut down, um, but events are taking place in a safe manner. You know, you have to, depending on wherever you're at, uh, maintain that social distance, maintain hand sanitizer, uh, make sure that you're getting masks to participants, whatever it is that you need to do to, to have a safe environment. You know, that's one of the, the first uh, and primary um, responsibilities. Of, of your club as you host an event, making sure people are safe, making sure everyone understands the rules, the regulations, the safety code, um, and um, that you're putting the best foot forward, not only for yourself and for your club, but for the organization and for the hobby as, as a whole. Uh, and the spectators, keeping them safe and and, uh, and healthy, you know, providing yeah. cleaning and whatever you need to do. Yeah. Exactly. I had something I was going to say, but it, it <laughs> wait, where did it go? I don't know what happened. Oh, I know what it was. Okay, I remember. As we move forward um, in in the coronavirus era and post coronavirus, um, don't anticipate your attendance to be as large as it has been in the past. If you've had events before, people people are hesitant right now, and they will continue to be. So you know, don't let that stop you. Still keep planning your events. And just consider social distancing. We have a great website. It is modelaircraft.org slash COVID-19. It has lots of information for you guys and how you can kind of navigate this situation while also still enjoying the hobby. So yeah. thanks for that question. That was actually that was that a really was, good question. That was great. And also hello to all the Marines around, you know. Um, Hoorah! Not, too bad you didn't go Army. Hoorah! But that's okay. <laughs> Go Marines. <laughs> oh, easy now. Marines are my favorite. <laughs> I actually interned at the National Museum of the U.S. Marine Corps in Quantico, so Marines are my favorite. Hey, appreciate you guys. Hoorah. <laughs> All right, friends. All right, where are we, we at are, here, Claire? We're at part five. So um, plan your program. Um, so this is kind of the schedule of events. How long is your event going to be? Is it going to be a full day? Is it just going to be a couple hours? Um, is it going to be... <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking maybe at a full, maybe a three day I see the comments. Uh, I yeah. started here. Is it going to be a multi-day event? I would say if you have zero experience with event planning, I would start with something fairly short, like just an afternoon or an evening event, something small ish build up so, to it yeah build up to that three day event don't don't try and do three days just like right off the bat um also again this goes back into um planning your event like figuring out the time of year you're going to do it because um if you want to attract families a lot of times actually morning events can be better for them because uh, the kids are awake. They're not hungry yet. They don't need a nap yet. You know, the families will stay longer. And also if you are planning um, a longer event over the period of a full day, you do have to consider things like food vendors. Because again, if a family has small children or children at all, really, and the kids get hungry, they are leaving. <laughs> they are 
we're not going to stick that. around. Like the kids, once the kids get hungry, it's like no amount of goldfish crackers and juice are going to cut it. Like they are going to go. So you, you got to think about that kind well, of thing. About, you know, if you were to host an event in your living room, you know, what are the things you're, you're taking care of people? Like that's the first and foremost, you're taking care of people and trying to, you know, think about what they're going to need and meet those needs before they, they are even there. You mm-hmm. know, that's, that's the, I, is thinking about people and what they need yeah exactly and so you also in addition to the flying portion which of course i think any kind of air modeling event that you're going to be putting on for the public is you're going to want to have a flying portion you're going to want to have a demo but you also need stuff for people to do and um (laughs) that's just that's just how it is because if someone has no interest in aero modeling and i i'm sorry you guys i i hate to like break this to all of you but there are people that exist that don't like (laughs) model airplanes (laughs) what (laughs) we can fix Uh, this i know we can fix this (laughs) with our how to plan a successful community event guide so they're not gonna want to stick around for that air show at two o'clock if they show up at 10 a.m they're going to want to have stuff to do. And yeah. so a great thing to have are flight simulators. Mm-hmm. A lot of clubs have done this. I, I hear about people doing it all the time. Actually, I fly Amy. I'm always seeing posts from clubs um, sharing how they had a flight sim at an event. And people loved it. I've taken those to Girl Scout events. And it's easily like the most fun thing because everybody really gets into it. So flight simulators. Um, if you have... Um, if you have a pond at your club, which I've noticed a lot of flying sites have ponds for some reason, um, have RC boats, have more demos, have demos of things that are not just uh, radio controlled. RC or cars, even, RC cars, even yeah. Paper planes, you know, like yeah. give kids a template and some uh, crayons. Uh, um, I was going to make a joke there, but I won't. Uh, markers, all that sort of thing. And um, FPG you'll keep nine. FPG, FPG nines. FPG nines, yeah, our world and, famous And you guys, we can, we can get those from AMA. They're very inexpensive, but we can mm-hmm. you know talk to the education department about that. But those are one things you can easily add. Uh, you, it doesn't take a whole lot, a couple of tables, some of those there, maybe one person kind of giving them some guidance. Like you said, crayons, markers. Knock yourself out. Kids will have a great time. Yeah, Yeah, just paper airplanes are really, really easy. I have um, actually our quick projects. If you visit amaflightschool.org slash quick projects, we have a super easy to build or fold, really, paper airplane that all you need is literally an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So if you're running short on your budget at the the part, like when the event's happening and you really, really need a kids activity, just have someone bring a pack of paper from their house and start folding paper airplanes with the kids. And you know what? There's something to be said for, for you know, buying like a bulk pack of Delta darts. If you've got time and enough volunteers to actually guide kids through that process, like that's what, what ignited my passion for model aviation was I, I, you know, built a Delta dart at like age 10 or 11 at the local park. And they did a little contest and, you know, we all tried to see who could fly the longest. And um, it was great. It was a great opportunity. And, you know, you can also develop those partnerships as you're making this um, this event you know, all that it can be, you can find the rocketry guys in your area. And, um, you know, maybe they could come out and, and build some model rockets with kids too. You know, the, the, the possibilities are really endless. They are. They are. Now I want to throw out there, you guys might not have thought about this, but never discount the appeal of a bounce house. Okay. <laughs> There, Any there. event that has a bounce house, your kids will not want to leave. And if you're really into the planes, Little Johnny can go jump in the bounce house for like three it, hours. <laughs> it really is amazing. Like even now, you know, I've got an uh, almost eleven year old, and when he sees a bounce house, he's like, "Hey, Dad, check that. Can I? Uh, can I go? Can, I, can I go? Uh... Now, man, you can't do that." But... <laughs> Good memory. <That's... laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, there's lots of things you can do to plan out your program. And something I really like, um, in addition to the flying demos that you're inevitably going to have, is something that Tony has done at a few of our <laughs> local events. And that is a candy drop. And it is just the coolest thing. Like, I remember the last time, uh, Model Aviation Day, we had a candy drop and actually was on break at the time. And 
I could see it from the museum uh, break room window. And I was like, oh, there it goes. You know? <laughs> like I knew it was going to happen, but it was still so exciting. So if you if you have that ability, I highly recommend doing a candy drop. For it's the a great kid, thing to get someone in your club to have an airplane that has uh, that capability. And it's uh, very easy to do. And it does uh, attract a lot of people. A lot of attention comes to that. Yeah, it's so, so much fun. All right, so we are now on number six of our list. We are at finding sponsors, vendors, and guests. And remember, we are still in the planning process of our event. We're just coming to this aspect of it. And we talked about it a little bit earlier, you know, finding um, ways to pay for your event. And this, depending on um, how you go about it, it can be difficult too easy it's it, it's a spectrum so like we said earlier tap into your network see who in your club has connections and who they know it chances are they're going to be able to get people to donate money or time or just about anything really and it's it's one of those things where you can um, ask for not only donation dollars but also in-kind donations and in-kind donations are something where it is uh, a material thing with a monetary value so maybe there is a food truck in your town and they're willing to donate food for 300 people and a lot of times this kind of thing is uh, tax deductible and um, so you could that'll save you money there and if you want to have a raffle or door prizes, for example, you can see if there's any kind of local companies that might be willing to donate an airplane, for example, as a door prize. And you can sell raffle tickets to that, and that'll help generate revenue for your event. So and that's course, super helpful. Yeah, with any kind of raffle event or anything like that, make sure you check your local uh, you know, and state guidelines with that, too. Yes, those vary enormously and from state to state like I can't even start to tell you what to do for that because you know I'm from California but I lived in Washington and I live in Indiana and the rules for raffles and fun and lotteries and all that stuff are totally different so find out what you can do and in what way you can do it and what you can call it that's really really important yeah sweepstakes <laughs> raffle giveaway yeah surprise door prize <laughs> whatever it is right. yeah definitely check those regulations <laughs> let's see oh you know another thing that i wanted to mention that i think is really important is uh try and find out where your uh closest eaa chapter is because coordinating with them, you can actually put on a collaborative event. They are really fun to work with. And you can um, give away Young Eagle rides um, build, and do their Build and Fly program. We typically have the Build and Fly, not Build and Fly, sorry, the, the Young Eagle rides when we have our um, local Model Aviation Day event. Yeah. We often have the kids come out and fly on airplanes. And for the kids in our area, you know, a lot of them have never been on an airplane before. And so it's an incredible experience. We have kids coming back year after year just because they get to ride on a plane. Well, yeah, I mean, my kids are into model airplanes, but if you tell them they get to ride on a real airplane, like they get, like my youngest is going to be old enough this year to go on his first uh, Young Eagle ride. He is so excited. That's all he's been talking about. It's like, dude, there's more than just that. Come on, man. Show us the love. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great draw. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I actually, uh, we have a really good comment. I don't know. Am I allowed to click on comments? No. Okay. So the Craft King, I don't know who gets to do it, but the Craft King said he built a plane specifically for a candy drop that was supposed to be on Easter and it didn't happen. And understandably, that probably didn't happen because of coronavirus. But that's something I want to bring up. You want to be really careful about planning your events around holidays. And it's not just because um, people might be busy or anything like that. But a lot of people go out of town for um, the holidays. And so they might not be able to come out for your event. And so the the window that I actually like to do when I plan holiday themed events like our Harvest Fly-In, um, I would typically do that kind of thing a week before a week to two weeks before the actual holiday itself, because then people are in that holiday spirit, but they're not out of town already. You know, like if you yeah wanted to have a Christmas fly in, have Santa Claus come and do all kinds of really cool stuff. Do that at the beginning of, of December, because that way, you know, you, you still are, it's very festive. It's very fun, but you're going to have better attendance than if you yeah. did something like 
the 20th of December. Yeah, so. families especially. Their dance cards get filled up so quick when it comes mm-hmm. to visiting different relatives, different places. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So be mindful. Oh, back to uh, planning. Sorry, finding your sponsors, vendors, and whatnot. This is something I want to mention is um, definitely when you're planning your event, uh, think about having a portion for it uh, that is dedicated to the Boy Scouts. So the Boy Scouts have a aviation merit badge, and one aspect of it is actually to build an FPG-9 that is in the merit badge book. I wish I could show you, but um, my merit badge book is at the AMA. <laughs> I can't really get to it right now, but it sure, is it's online re- somewhere. It's somewhere. It's a recognized requirement of the um, Boy Scout Aviation Merit Badge. And so it's so easy to become certified as a Merit Badge Counselor. I am, I'm one, and it took maybe 15 minutes to get certified for that. And so find someone in your club who is planning on attending the, um, working the event and have them, you know, be at that table building FPG-9 with the kids and definitely reach out to all of your local Boy Scout troops. And so you say, hey, are any of your boys or girls girls working on the aviation badge well they can fulfill it here actually they can fulfill two of the requirements because one of them is attending an air show well here's your air show at the harvest (laughs) fly-in so for this before this is done we're gonna have a harvest fly-in i think (laughs) just you watch it's gonna be amazing (laughs) and people are gonna be like you know i heard about this yeah, on, what uh, is it? Let's do this. Amy Live. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it is six months from now, it's hey, going to be on October I mean, 24th. <laughs> new to do for you, Claire. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Tony will set that up. Right. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, number seven. We are on number seven of our of our list. Oh, great! See, Balsa USA. There's our first sponsor. Yeah, Joe, he's right there. Done. <laughs> Look at that. That's that's, that's why I was invented on, or not invented. That's why I was invited to be on this uh, live stream. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So you want to build a marketing campaign, and I know that. That sounds a little bit scary. That sounds a little intimidating, and I really apologize for that. Um, This is really a fancy way of saying promote your event, promote, 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 like do this, like tell everyone about your event until they are sick of hearing about your event. And you can do this all kinds of places. If you have, um, this is where your younger members of your club come in, get them on Facebook and get them to set up an event page for your event event and it's really easy nice and simple and while you're at it create a facebook page for your club so people can find you i've noticed with my events at the national model aviation museum the majority of people hear about it on facebook so you're gonna want to have somebody promoting your event on facebook and you can actually do this considerably well without having to pay for pay for ads for targeted um promotion you can actually just Post, 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 post. As long as you have the location, the date, the time, the admission, people are going to find your event. Um, Let's see. So Facebook is a great place to do it. But you can also, going back to that local community calendar we talked about earlier, you generally can submit events to those things for free. You just, you know, contact the web administrator. Usually there is a form on the website. You type in everything in. And trust me, you're going to be doing that a lot. When I've (laughs) promoted events for the museum, I have gone on every website I can think of. And then after a while, you're just like, okay, this is what it is. This is like, you don't even copy paste anymore. You're just like automatically (laughs) doing it. (laughs) Uh, I'll I'll say real quick too. There are some video tutorials for how to make a Facebook page for your club or also um, how to set up that event uh, on Facebook. Uh, They're linked in the document uh, as well. So that's available um, on our uh, amaflightschool.org website. So. Absolutely. And remember those networks we were talking about, the networks that every person in your club has, that is when you tap into those networks even more. You got to design some kind of a flyer for your event. And it does not have to be fancy. It really just has to have the name of the event, the date, the time, the cost, and the location. 
Like, that's basically all you need. And maybe a picture of a flying pumpkin because this is a Halloween <laughs> event. <laughs> Harvest flying. Um, so you distribute that to your club members and you have them distribute them into their network. Have them take them to work. You, a lot of jobs, they have a billboard, you know, like a, like a cork board that you can tack things onto. Um, a lot of coffee shops have uh, boards for community events. Just go around town. Uh, grocery stores have them. Libraries. Anywhere where people gather, generally speaking, will have a place for you to put up a flyer for your event. So just pound that pavement. Like Get yourself out there and get the word out because people will really respond to that and they will really know where to go and when to go to it and well, it's a lot more difficult to say no to somebody when you're right there next to them it's like hey yeah. would you like to support this it's gonna be great you know i'm a friendly guy you, you know you want to help me out it works out really well that way yeah and that's another great way to oh. um get your sponsors for the event you know if you're like hey would you be interested in sponsoring you know you get your name on the t-shirt you get your name on a banner whatever that kind of thing is like it, you can work that into your um your uh, your budget Thought, I've also had a few, few situations where uh, you can, uh, it depends on what the event is, but if you include anything that is a local community uh, idea or thing that's going on, maybe you're raising money for the fire department or you're mm -hmm. doing something like that. When you reach out, if you have a TV station in your town or radio station, lots of times they will come out and maybe even the day or two days before and shoot some some video get some film and they'll give you a 30 second spot on the six o'clock nightly news mm -hmm. about this event that's coming up you know tomorrow uh it's great bring the kids out they're doing this and it's for toys for tots or it's for whatever and uh that that will get you and another way to get on local radio station or on tv um, and even in the newspaper so th yeah. don't forget using those kind of traditional outlets as well Absolutely. That kind of thing really, really helps. Um, it helps a lot. And also uh, raising money for local charities, that can really help a lot too. That can gain get you a lot of um, attendance. So see what is out there. You know, see if there is a school, any kind of yeah. um, like Toys for Tots, that kind of thing. Um and see if there's anything you can, oh, local children's hospital, that's another great one. And you can even incorporate they, that into your theme. So if you're having a, um, a holiday fly-in, for example, in December, you know, you can make it into bring, bring a toy for, you know, the kids at the local children's hospital or something yeah. like that, you know. Create yeah, that community, community atmosphere. Yeah, definitely. And that's something that, that is so valuable because uh, when you build up that rapport within the entirety of the community, um, when your club is known for being the go-to that actually supports people and helps people, then when it comes up time, you know, when someone makes a complaint or there's an ordinance question or, you know, whatever it is, when you face those trials as a club, if you've already built up that kind of goodwill towards you know you guys being part of that community the community will really step up and uh support you as well yep. absolutely so we have now we have now put on the first annual harvest flying at the ama <laughs> as a uh, mean joe put it because i'm cd of it now <laughs> <laughs> fun fact i wrote that exam so <laughs> i'm an I, i'm a cd it's basically that's me. <laughs> I would love to put that on, honestly. Um, <laughs> now, now that we have had, now that we've had our event, our wonderful, amazing event, um, you have to build on your new relationships with attendees. This is actually kind of rewinding back from what Kyle was saying. That's not the end of it. Like when you put on your event, when it happens, that's not the end. You don't want these people to come to your, your flying site one time. You want them to keep coming back for the future. So they're going to say, this was great. I loved it. My kids, my kids had a great time. When are you doing something else? You need to have an answer for that. Yep. You need to have something in the, in the works 
a secondary event committee, you know, plan already planning something to happen, a another event to happen so that they will keep coming back and they'll keep that interest. And even if it's just having, you know, someone in your club that is, you know, designated as that welcoming person, the, the mm -hmm. guy that says, you know, Hey, I'll step up. I'll teach anybody to fly and say, you know, actually in two weeks or in one week or whatever it is, we're going to have an open house again, where if you came to this event and you're excited about maybe learning how to fly these things, come out, we'll, We'll do some buddy boxing. We'll have fun. Um, you know, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it could even be as simple as, hey, you know, we're going to do this live event on Facebook. We're going to host this quick project. We're all going to build this thing together and it'll be fun. And then we can meet back here and, and you know, do a competition with them or something. Um, you know, there's a lot of different opportunities out there to, to keep people engaged. Because if you put forth all your effort and energy, like once a year in your community, well, a year is a long time. And it can be a great event, but if you're not doing things consistently, people don't remember you consistently. Yeah, you'll exactly. Find, you'll find that if you if you have activities, it keeps your club focused and involved and active. So I would I would encourage you to have several things, even if it's just a club event. And and like I said, one like Kyle brought up, one of the most important things I think for all of our clubs is most all clubs are looking to gain some new members. Mm -hmm. So you want to grab onto those folks. Maybe you do a post activity survey or you ask some questions there at the event. You have somebody who who's kind of watching and they see a kid or a family that's more interested, you know, really asking questions and you reach back out to them, say, come back Thursday night. We're having our Thursday night training night. Come out and bring mm -hmm. your airplane or we'll provide an airplane. So I think those are the ways that you really can cash in, if you if to say, on, on this event. Because you can grab some new members um, that just didn't know you were there. And you'll yeah. see that happen continually as long as you have these events. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, it does, like Tony said, it doesn't have to be a big next thing. You know, it doesn't have to be your big next event. It can be just, you know, a buddy boxing night, a fun, a fun fly night at the club. Um, you can also um, keep people's interest. Say that you can't really afford or you don't have the manpower to have several events per year. Maybe you really can only have this one event. See what community events exist where you can table. See mm -hmm. if you can rent a table space at your next community um, a community STEM night at your local schools or your next county fair. And just have information about the AMA there. Have stuff available for people and say, you know, every Thursday night we, we do buddy boxing. Come out and see what we're doing. Come find out about model aviation with us and that'll keep people interested and also you can kind of gauge you know what people might want to come and see and do with your club and that can be really helpful and it'll also give you opportunities to make connections in the community because eventually people will come to know you as you know that person from that flying club i go to a lot of community events you know on behalf of the ama and <laughs> i just want to say that literally a lady stopped me in the target parking lot not long ago and she's like oh my gosh it's claire from the ama and i was <laughs> like what <laughs> that's amazing that's right wow i, I had like a celebrity are, moment <laughs> to tie you together with your club are, are really important and for for some of these folks that see model airplanes and kind of get hooked on the magic of, of model flying just inviting them out to come out next Saturday. Hey, we fly every Saturday, every Sunday afternoon. Just come on out and just hang out with us, and you know you're you're invited. Yeah, um, that's all it takes sometimes to get people hooked on it and and give them a chance to like like Kyle said, get them on a buddy box and see what happens. And that that's where you really grab your new people. Um, they they're the ones who have seen it and are, are interested and they're asking questions in the follow ups. So I think that's kind of the benefit of having these events. Obviously, you're helping. The community, they're you providing a fun activity, but in the long run, in the long run, the the club is the one that can gain on this because they get better statue within the community, and then they also gain new members. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And we're coming up on we've been in this for just over fifty minutes. We're coming up on our closing time. If anybody's got any questions, um, any comments, suggestions for for your fellow uh, AMA members here feel free to throw those out. You know, this is part of a community. And the idea is to engage with you guys as we have these conversations uh, right. to let you guys kind of drive some of this conversation. So we've gone through the uh, the eight points that, that we've got put together here, but I do want to make sure that we do give some time for uh, some of that engagement as well. It looks like, I mean, Joe's going to paint his head orange. 
So uh, yes, for the harvest fly-in. <laughs> okay, perfect, perfect. Well, I saw there on Douglas Leroy's last note that uh, he said their Parks and Rec affords them three events a year, and where they buddy box with the public, and they flew over two hundred members last year. That's, That's awesome! Fantastic, so Douglas. That's a really great event, and you can use uh, some of the other things that the education, the tag grant. Um, mm -hmm. is a great uh, grant that you can get as a club to mm -hmm. create you buy some flight simulators or trainer planes and use them in that in that uh, newcomer type event to get people uh, exposed to model aviation and flying so those are great things to do and in a park and rec situation that's their job the park and rec is looking for something to get people to their park that's why they exist yeah. so the club is doing them a favor by creating an activity that brings a new demographic to their park it's a perfect so partnership. Reach out. reach out. All right. We got a comment from SC. He asked, when uh, is the next Harvest fly-in? Um, right now, it's a hypothetical event, but you will be the first to know when it does actually happen. We'll put that on Facebook. It'll be a whole thing. I mean, yeah. mean Joe's going to paint his head orange. So, I mean, it kind of has to happen now. <laughs> we, can start, oh, we can do a dry run at the AMA Fun fly fly in that's happening in uh, yeah. part of July, I think, or late June. So we check can out. Do, um, a bunch of Halloween themed aircraft. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, Halloween's a great time because there's you know candy on sale typically for those drops that's as right. they come up. That's right. <laughs> well, guys, um, we'll keep our eyes open for the next few minutes as uh, some. Uh, more questions or comments might come in, but I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention, if you're not a member of the Academy of Model Aeronautics, of course, you're welcome. Um, you know, we do a lot of different things for communities, uh, but as far as communities, this is a pretty nice one to be a part of. Yes. Um, from different flying sites, whatever you fly, you know, and wherever you're flying, we've got your back and um, we're excited to have you in this community. So yes. if you haven't been a member in a while, um, if you're thinking about becoming a member for your first time, either way, uh, you're welcome. And if you are a member and you're watching, you know, thank you very much for your, your support. Um, it really does mean a lot. Um, not only to, to me on staff, obviously, and, and to us as part of this community, but as a flyer myself, um, you know, the support that the Academy of Model Aeronautics really does provide uh, in terms of government advocacy, community advocacy, uh, and just straight up good, clean fun. Um, it's a great place to be. Same. And sure. make sure if you are, haven't liked, shared, and subscribed to our YouTube channel, definitely do that. And be sure to join our community page. It is iFlyAMA. It's facebook.com slash groups slash iFlyAMA, I think. <laughs> Either way, just search for iFlyAMA on Facebook and you can join us there. It is tons of fun. And I would, I would be remiss if I did not mention that uh, AMA Air will be coming at you on Friday, May 1st. I think it's going to be another live episodes so be sure to tune in for that i'm having so much fun doing these lives yeah. so i hope you guys like them too <laughs> for sure let us know I mean, we're always out to improve but uh as far as having a great conversation with you guys i couldn't think of two people that i'd rather talk to on an afternoon on friday so yeah, fun. <laughs> great to see well um with that, guys, uh, we'll keep our eyes on the comments even after this uh, is not live. Um, and uh, feel free to share, share this with your friends if they, if they happen to miss it. And um, hopefully we'll see you all at the flying field soon. Absolutely. Have a Thank great you. weekend. Bye-bye, guys. Everybody.